Crusader Kings 3 Royal Court is but days away. In this video, I'm going to show you the final chapters of, spoiler alert, Jumboy MacPixel's journey. But also, more importantly, I'll be showing up information like this on screen, showing you the new features from Crusader Kings 3 Royal Court DLC. Without any further ado, let's jump into this game after that mess and talk about, firstly, the free additions that will be added as part of the Crusader Kings 3 Royal Court free update to all players. What you're seeing on screen is but a small example. There are three key gameplay elements that everybody will get access to from the 8th of February when the DLC releases as part of a free update. They are the inventory system, traditions, and court positions. I'm going to start with court positions first and show you information on screen throughout the video where you need it. Here they are over on the left. Basically, there are a whole load of new hireable roles within your court, from court jester to somebody who checks your food in case it's poisoned, and seriously everywhere in between, bodyguards, you name it, there are a whole load of roles that you can hire for within your court. Hiring for these roles of course costs you money, but will net you additional benefits. Think for example about those bodyguards that we talked about earlier, who might be able to keep you safe when you're, <laughs> I don't know, bringing uh, enemies to your court. However, of course, the actual royal court itself is only included in the paid DLC, and I'll talk about more of that in the second part of this video. What you need to know is that court positions are available. Think about the court physician that was always in the game and then add that and give that steroids. And that is essentially what we will be able to do as part of the free update coming to Crusader Kings 3 is hire a whole load of court positions. However, that is not the only new free edition. The other one is inventory. And again, I'll have to talk about this a little bit more in the second part of this video, but what you need to know about the free inventory system is essentially there are a whole load of items. Some of them are useful, others are not. You can wear them, you can use them, you can wield them, and they will be able to be equipped in your inventory. And of course, don't forget all of the other gameplay elements that go along with that. Stealing them from other people, plotting to steal them, for example. I think the best way to sort of prove this is to show this. Here is essentially what it looks like in practice. It builds on the updates to the culture system, the more flexible culture system that's being implemented in the DLC. Here you can see a variety of different traditions that form a part of, in this case, the English culture. Of course, this will be adaptable and change a lot depending on who, where, and what you're playing in Crusader Kings. Apologies for the quality on those shots back there as well. I promise there'll be better quality moving forward as soon as the DLC is actually officially released and I I can get my hands on it. Uh, speaking of getting our hands on it, there is actually one small other addition that I'm pretty sure will be included as part of the free update, although Paradox didn't actually talk about it in any of their announcement videos or comms, or at least not too much, but I'm pretty sure every one of us will be able to customize our family's coat of arms uh, in, <laughs> in Crusader Kings 3. It's a fun little feature, and if you think about how it builds on to the character customization that's already been implemented into the game uh, since it released and built upon since it released, uh, I think that's another fun little factor that will be shaping the free update for Crusader Kings 3. There will of course be, I'm assuming, additional patch updates, uh, tweaks as well. We don't have the full patch notes yet, but as soon as we do, I'll probably cover those here on the channel. It's going to be a busy week for Crusader Kings 3 fans, let me tell you. Anyway, let me also tell you about these weapons, because those are, and alongside a bunch of other things, part of what will be coming to Crusader Kings as part of the Royal Court paid update. And I've already covered the free things, now we're going to move through and cover the paid things. However, if you don't have the paid DLC, or if you're not thinking about purchasing it right now, I would encourage you to stay through the rest of the video here and listen, because some of the paid features interact very heavily with some of those free ones that we've already discussed. The first one that I splashed on the screen before, here it is again. It's a couple of items, weapons, Excalibur, you could see. Uh, those uh, weapons will be uh, sort of brought into line with the inventory system. We call them court artifacts. Court artifacts are going to be a big part of the game moving forward. And as part of the paid DLC, you will get access to the full suite of artifacts 
And of course you will store them in your royal court. This is the crux of the update. Of course, it's Crusader Kings' royal court in all of its glory, bringing the real world, you, a leader, sitting in your royal courtroom and summoning your courtiers or rulers from afar if you're so lucky, or perhaps just roaming adventurers. Either way, this royal courtroom will be a place where you can both interact with events in the game, summoning people, etc. But also where you can store and display your artifacts, whether they are those weapons that we talked about before, or pieces of furniture, other things in between. Seriously, there's a whole load on offer here inside of the royal courtroom. There's actually so much that just talking about court artifacts is barely scratching the surface. If you'd like to fully understand what's coming out in the DLC update, I suggest you check out my video from a couple of other days before this one where I went through all of those features, but we're not done yet. It's just quickly important to note though that while you will have access to the inventory system as a free player, you may not, in fact will not, have access to all of the grand suite of court artifacts that go along with that system. So just bear that in mind, more details to follow. Next up we have the Court Grandeur system, and actually it's more just a Grandeur system as a whole. This is introduced as part of the paid update alongside your Royal Court, and as you've seen on screen it covers everything from court lodgings to food, fashion, and servants. Those are the four key elements that will build the Grandeur of your Court. You can think of it as grandness if you want to be really blunt. It has levels, as you can see, and the different levels are affected by those preconditions that I was talking about before. What quality of food are you serving? Are you fashionable or are you... <laughs> I got flamed for saying it in my previous video, but are you wearing a potato sack? The real uh, sort of crux of this and what you need to know is that the Grandia system is another paid system introduced in line with the royal courtroom itself, that physical courtroom that your characters will sit in. Here, by the way, is the, dare I say, final chapters of Jumboy. Either way, <laughs> the Grandia system uh, is uh, strongly interrelated with your money and it represents both how famous you are and what people expect of your court. So if you are the Roman Empire, there will be more expectations placed on you, whereas if you are a lowly chap in the middle of nowhere, not so much. Again, if you want more detail on that, check out my video from the other day. The other thing here that's really coming through for paid DLC players, not so much for the free update is all of the suite of changes that are coming as part of cultures and really the whole element of making them more dynamic. If you're just getting the free update, you're missing out on everything except for traditions. You might be wondering, well, what is everything? Let me tell you. Eventually, cultures will become more like faith in Crusader Kings, more dynamic. There'll be two options for changing, diverging, or upgrading a culture called hybridization, that's merging two together, and divergence, separating away from what used to be, from tradition, if you will. These cultures will be created using three different factors. Cultural ethos, the pillars of a culture, that's how people sort of practice it, uh, language, heritage, architecture, etc. And finally, those traditions, are your people fighters, historically, or are they farmers? Uh, essentially, the new system will lead to divergent and hybrid cultures where you'll have more control, more realism, but also that flexibility, that sort of natural changing to cultures, because change to cultures wasn't always top down in that divergent message, but also hybridization is possible. Again, I'd defer you to my other video if you want a little more detail other than the bare bones basics, but I hope that this video has pieced together a very important story from you. If you're a free player, you will get inventory, traditions, and court positions. If you're paying for the DLC, you'll get access to the court itself and all of the events and grandeur that goes along with it when Crusader Kings Royal Court releases on the 8th of February. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.